right? And they're like, yeah, we won the state championship. So it was really good. I got to speak to the team uh, before the game, and we're really proud of uh, uh, the sports season as a whole because these are kids that have worked really hard to be able to have this opportunity and uh, to win a state championship is something they'll always remember. Heck, even to compete for one was a big deal. And what I told them was just reminded when we were meeting with Coach Victorian, what I told them then was true. If they had been in California, they would have been on their couch because they would not have been able to even be allowed to compete in any type of sports. So uh, we're proud that we have not only Right now, they finished the school year here. We were just in Baker County. You know, we had school year. We had sports. We did everything. That was obviously the right decision. I think the places that lock the kids out of sports and lock the kids out of school, you know, it's just a total disaster. We're going to have to, uh, I think, pay the consequences of those decisions for, for years and years to come. We've got a great uh, team of folks here. We have our lieutenant governor in attendance. We have Senator Kelly Stargell, Aaron Bean, Jen Bradley, Burrow. We also have uh, Selena Soul, who's a former Connecticut high school track athlete, who is going to talk about the bill that we had today and how the lack of protections in her state uh, ended up denying her opportunities uh, to be able to compete. Uh, we believe in the state of Florida uh, of protecting the fairness and the integrity of women's athletics. Being able to compete in a variety of sports in Florida, fortunately, has opportunities across a wide range of sports. We're very competitive in a number of different sports. Uh, provides our young girls uh, with opportunities that, that really uh, teach them lessons that last a lifetime. And I think the same is true uh, for all of our sports. Certainly, it was true for me uh, growing up here in the state of Florida, being able to compete. Uh, and it took me to college. It's taken many of our girls college to be able uh, to, to get an education and to compete. So we believe that it's very important that, uh, that the integrity of those competitions uh, are preserved, that these opportunities are protected. And uh, I can tell you this, in Florida, you know, girls are going to play girls sports and boys are going to play boys sports. That's what we're doing. And we're going to make sure that that's the reality. So. The bill that we're doing uh, today uh, will ensure fairness uh, for women athletes uh, for years to come in the state of Florida. Um, it says that athletic teams or sports uh, that are designated for females are open uh, to females. And we're going to go based off biology, not based off ideology when we're doing sports. The bill defines the student's biological sex based on the student's official birth certificate time of birth, and as part of the bill we're signing today, not only making sure women have opportunities for scholarships and competition at the highest level, we're also putting uh, in statute ways to actually vindicate the rights of any women athletes who may be discriminated against. So moving forward, any student who's deprived of an athletic opportunity as a result of a violation of this law will have the right to civil remedies. Any school or public post-secondary institution that suffers direct or indirect harm as a result of the violation of this bill, including by a governmental entity, accrediting organization, or athletic association, can also pursue civil remedies. Any student who's subject to retaliation as a result of reporting a violation of this bill can also pursue civil remedies. So we're not just setting a standard, we're also providing ways uh, where that fairness quality can be enforced uh, on behalf of our girls and our women athletes. So one of the reasons why I think this has become um, an issue is because we've seen, particularly in other states, you would have these blatantly unfair track races and all these other things where these girls train and then they end up not being able to advance to compete in state or, or what have you. So we should have a, a quick video so we're going to part the, part the Red Sea here for a minute. Show the video. Then I'm going to have Selena Soul come up and talk about it. Thank you. Out of the 100 is in lane 5. Chelsea Mitchell 
in lane six. Mitchell ended up the 100 meter champion after the false start. Michelle Smith in seven, Carly Swirebutton eight, Jillian Mars second in the 400 is in nine. Here comes Terry Miller. Miller after the false start in the one takes the 200. It'll be 24 low. Terry Miller of Bloomfield in five, the overwhelming favorite. Alana Smith is in six, Emily Mulhern in seven, Selena Sewell in eight, Megan Wasik in nine, and as expected, it is Miller and then Smith. Ooh, takes four. She just broke her own stay open record. Yikes. So you see, you see in those races, I mean, you have all those, all those girls who are, who are competing and you know, it just wasn't a level playing field. Um, it wasn't fair. And Selena is um, is here from Connecticut, and she's going to talk about how this has impacted uh, her opportunities. And so, Selena. My name is Selena Soul, and I'm a track and field athlete from Connecticut. You may know my story, but if you don't, I'd like to share how that policy in my city of Connecticut has robbed me, my teammates, as well as every other female track athlete in my state of the opportunity to compete on a fair and level playing field. I have been competing in track and field since the moment I was to be when I was a little girl. Track means everything to me. I would wake up every morning eager to get on the track, waiting to run, building a jump. I love my sport. I've spent countless hours training to achieve the the second half of my time, so I could be the best. I raced to win, but my chance of being first of being the best shattered. In 2017, Connecticut began allowing two male athletes who self-identify as girls to compete in girls' sports. During all four years of high school, I was supposed to compete against them, even though they were bigger, stronger, and faster than me because they were male. In just three years, these two athletes won 15 women's championship titles and they set 17 new individual league records, records which we girls had no hope of breaking. I remember what it was like to line up for a race against my blocks, already knowing the outcome, long before the race started. Those two biological males would dominate the field, leaving us girls to compete for third place in the end. No matter how hard we trained and how hard we pushed ourselves, they beat us time and time again. We elite female athletes don't keep up a normal high school experience just with participation trophies. We raced men. Sports have always had separate rules to ensure fairness. Everyone should have the chance to participate in sports, but they need to compete where it's most fair. This isn't about self-expression. This is about our right, a woman's right, to win. I have lost countless opportunities over the past few years. I lost opportunities to compete on world-class tracks and opportunities to win titles. During my junior year, I was denied the chance to compete at the regional New England Championships. I missed advancing to the next level of competition in the 55 meter dash by just two spots, two spots that were taken by biological males. It was frustrating, heartbreaking, and demoralizing to be sidelined in my own sport. Female athletes deserve the same opportunity as boys to excel and chase our dreams. Allowing male athletes to compete in girls' sports shatters those dreams and strips away opportunities that so many of us have spent years working to obtain. We must protect the integrity of women's sports. So I decided to take action. Three of my fellow female athletes and I filed a lawsuit last year with the Alliance Defending Freedom against the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference because girls and women deserve the chance to compete on a fair playing field. After reviewing the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, all I can say on behalf of all female athletes is thank you, Governor. <laughs> As someone who was one of the first to start speaking against this injustice, it is very encouraging that my story has reached people across the country and that many have seen what's happened in Connecticut and want to take the stand to protect female athletes in their state and to protect women's sports so no other young girl has to go through the same pain and heartbreak I had to endure my four years of high school. I am grateful to Florida lawmakers and especially Governor DeSantis for preserving fairness in women's sports and allowing countless young girls and women the opportunity to succeed in the sport they love. As a female athlete, I recognize the opportunities for higher competition are limited, including access to college recruitment, scholarship funds, equal access to facilities, coaches, training opportunities, and even opportunities to play professionally, even decades after Title IX. 
This bill is about protecting the advances we've already made as women in this space and creating a fair opportunity to empower women to aspire and to achieve in the most fair way possible. I only wish the rest of the country would take these obvious steps to ensure fairness and equality for women and girls like me. Once again, thank you, Governor DeSantis. Well, I want to thank Selena for coming down here uh, from Connecticut. I know she's in college and she's actually figuring out maybe she can transfer to a school in Florida. So we're if you're out there and you're doing women's track and any of the coaches at our state universities, uh, you may want to give her a call. So we'll, uh, we'll be happy to help with that. Um, so I want to thank the legislators for, uh, for providing these protections. You know, when this was going on, you heard different things being said about, you know, some of these corporations get all spun up. Uh, some of these organizations say they're not going to hold events if you do this. And just let me say very clearly, in Florida, we're going to do what's right. We'll stand up to corporations. They are not going to dictate the policies in this state. We will stand up to groups like the NCAA who think that they should be able to dictate the policies in different states. Not here, not ever. And so uh, we won't be cowed. Uh, we will stand strong. And here's the thing. At the end of the day, if the price of providing opportunities that can last a lifetime for all the girls throughout the state of Florida, for ensuring fair competition for them, if the price of that is that we lose an event or two, you know, I would choose to protect our young girls every day of the week in place on the same thing. So we have the, uh, the legislature, legislators who were the, the sponsors of, of the bill, and so I want to invite up uh, Senator Kelly Stargell, who helped uh, shepherd this through the Florida Senate. Thank, thank you very much, Governor, for being here. Thank you for signing this heartfelt bill. And many of you did this bill through the process, tried to make it about something that it wasn't. This bill is very centered about making sure that women can safely compete, have opportunities, and, and physically be able to excel in a sport that they've trained for, prepared for, and worked for. I don't think this is a, a place that Selena ever thought she would be or even desired to be to try to work on something like It's such a common sense issue, and it's unfortunate that it has become lost in the rhetoric of the day that what we're dealing with. This is nothing about anybody being discriminated against. It's solely so that women have an opportunity to compete in women's sports. We all know that men are stronger than women. I, watching the video, I kept thinking to myself, I've always heard as a kid, you, know, you run like a girl. And when you're looking at that video, it's really evident that the, the woman, the, the transgender woman who, who competed or, or a self-identified woman, ran very differently than the others in the competition. It, it's physiologically different. They're you know, stronger, they have you know, longer capacity, stronger muscles. It's common sense. And Governor, I appreciate you working with us to, to push this issue forward. It is a difficult issue, it's the right issue, it's the right thing to work on, it's an urgent issue to make sure that we protect our women. So thank you, Governor. Thank you for the question. Okay, Kaylee Top, where is she? Okay, 
daily tech. I'm going to sign in one sec, but I, I want to just a smaller issue, a part of this. As many of you know, when these legislators are doing things, it's like making sausage, there's different things that happen, and so as part of this bill, uh, for whatever reason, there was a provision there that was delaying something that we did previously in my administration with the legislature, respecting college athletes' ability to uh, use their name, image, and likeness and be able to be compensated if people are doing that. Uh, the, the bill that I'll sign today actually uh, extends the date of effect from July 1st of this year to July 1st of next year. However, uh, that was fixed. There's another bill that I will then subsequently sign, which will take precedence over that provision of this bill. And so rest assured, July 1st, 2021, just as planned, the name, image, and likeness, the college athletes will be able um, to be compensated if people are using their name, image, and likeness. And I know that we actually, our coaches in throughout Florida, use that to recruit uh, different athletes to be able to come to our state universities. Uh, and we think that we're proud of Florida leading the way on that uh, yet again, and we'll uh, continue to do it. So you read this bill, you will see that the one-year delay, but just understand that one-year delay is, is rectified already. It will be rectified once I sign the other legislation. That will happen so everyone can proceed uh, accordingly as July 1st, the date where our name, image, and likeness bill takes effect. We're very proud of that as well. All right, let's go. Buddy? We'll start back here. Jim? So I think the, um, uh, I think one, we just, uh, I met him at the football game. We have a good relationship. I mean, I don't think there was anything, you know, more to it than that. They had a venue to unlock, so we did it. But I think, um, you know, a lot of our schools throughout Florida have done an excellent job in providing opportunities for people. Uh, particularly for, for women athletes. And I think if you look across the board, we do about as good as anybody. And we're very proud of it. Um, first of all, the, it's, it's not a message to anything other than saying we're going to protect fairness of women's sports. We believe that um, it's important to have integrity in the competition. 
we think it's important that they're able to compete on a level playing field. And uh, you've seen what's happened when you don't have that. Yes, ma'am. So it's something that, uh, depending on the issue, DEP has the oversight over. And I know we just saw, um, I guess, an incident with over the, over the weekend. You know, very, very troubling. Uh, we obviously want to have safety first. Uh, so they are uh, absolutely uh, looking into that. There's things that I can do from an administrative perspective that I'm obviously willing to uh, do that. Hey, thanks, everybody. Great to be here.